Good day. Today we um, came to look at what professional town planners are making use of or the tools that they're making use of in determining uh, the property potential um, or the property data. Um, Christian Guerta from Planet Planning Solutions, town planners and planning consultants is going to give us uh, more insight into their world. Um, the video is about 11 minutes. Um, sit back and enjoy it. Um, one of the things that I really enjoyed and found very informative is the reference to the, the, the geographic information systems, or as you refer to the, the GIS, the uh, website where you can gain all the information will appear on the screen. Uh, what's so amazing about this website is that you can see what a property is zoned for, get the earth number, um, you can get engineering services on that, satellite photos, etc. But um, let's leave it up to the professionals to explain that to us. Um, so as I said, sit back and enjoy and um, make use of the information that Christian is sharing with us. All the best. Thank you. Good day. I'm Christian Boeta, a representative for Planet Planning Solutions, Town Regional Planning Consultants located in Ekruleni. We request the Bayan Yodan attorneys to prepare a short presentation on the tools available to property professionals to obtain property data and determine property potential. We make use of the following tools and sources of information. Number one is local authority websites such as Geographic Information Systems or GIS for short as well as websites for satellite viewers and maps. Number two is personal company and property information databases. Number three is town planning schemes. And number four is spatial development frameworks. For each category, we will share with you the specific sites we use to gather property information and give a quick run through to use each of these tools and sources of information. Thank you. The first tool we use to obtain property data and determine property potential is geographic information systems and websites with maps and satellite imaging. For the purpose of this presentation, we make use of the Ikaruleni GIS site, which is available at gis.ikaruleni.gov.za forward slash mapviewer forward slash. Other GIS viewers include the City of Johannesburg GIS, the City of Tswane GIS and the Gauteng City Region Observatory or GCRO. Most of these larger councils have a GIS platform available to the public free of charge. Other websites with maps and satellite imaging include the Google Earth Pro and Google Maps. For the purpose of this presentation, we're going to be looking at the key elements of Google Earth Pro as well as the Ikaruleni GIS site next. GIS platforms is a great tool for accessing property information. Most metro councils have such tools available free of charge. We will make use of the Ikiruleni GIS for the purpose of this presentation. With the Ikiruleni GIS, we can access the following property information, such as zoning, height zones, property boundaries and coverage. We can also access the following layers of information, such as future roads, engineering services, environmental services and the latest author photos. I'm going to just run you through how to access this data. We're taking you to subject property in line field. So if you found the subject property, you left click in the middle of the property and the information slip would come up. You can enlarge this to see it more clearly. You can scroll through the, through the pages. On the second page of the subject property, you'd find zoning, you would find coverage, you'd find density and height zone, which is the most relevant information with regards to this property. If you look to the right of the screen, you'll find the layers. We can turn off and on layers as we wish. We can turn on the transportation layer. A very useful tool here is to turn on the provincial road reserves so we can see if our property is affected by future planning of the PWV or K routes, which has a massive impact on properties. When accessing this information, you can see the provincial route highlighted as such. You can also go into the engineering services map, turn 
pull the layers on or off as we wish. If you turn the engineering services map on, you would see that sewer is provided in green and water is provided in blue. And this is where the sewer and water line runs. The brown contours are also here. If you zoom in, you can find the values of that. The last layer we're going to be looking at in terms of the Igrilene GIS is the environmental data layer. We frequently use the hydrology and environmental sensitivity layers here, which you can turn on like so. It also gives you what type of hydrology it is and how environmentally sensitive the area is. You can just turn that on and then you can see that. This shows the hydrology and this shows the environmental sensitivity. On to Google Earth next. The next tool we're going to be looking at is Google Earth Pro. Google Earth Pro is a great program to see the latest and historic satellite imaging for properties. This can be accessed by downloading the program to a computer. When looking for historic satellite imaging, look for the clock on the ribbon, which is this feature here. The latest image is the 5th of the 5th, 2020. We can go back all the way to 2002. Just drag this all the way back and we can see satellite imaging basically every year from 2002 onwards. Google Earth Pro also has the feature of Street View. which is imaging from the street. This is also a feature we frequently use. The Chief Surveyor General website is one of the sites we frequently use. It's available at csg.dla.gov.za and you can access SG diagrams here, full scanned images, click here. And you can fill in the information of the property you're looking for there. Or if you have the document number, you can type it in here. Furthermore, we can access spatial data, spatial cadastral data here. And it will take you to the GIS site, basically. You can zoom in countrywide. And just like the Ikaruleni GIS, you can access the layers. The layers list. And there's a bunch of layers you can turn on and off as you need them. The second tool we use to obtain property data and determine property potential is personal company and property information databases. We mostly make use of Windeed, which is available at www.windeed.coza. We make use of Windeed for the following information, such as title deed, name of owner, purchasing price, purchasing date and contact information. Other personal company and property information databases include SearchWorks. Next, I'll be running you through Windeed and how the key elements of Windeed. Welcome to Windeed. Windeed is a great platform to access personal company and property information. However, it is a pay to search database and you have to register with Windeed to be able to use this website. One of the first things I can run you through is property details. You must make sure that you're searching under the right deeds office. Secondly, you type in the property information here. Make sure you have the right township. Then you can either search the deeds office or the Windy database. The only difference is with the deeds office search, you get the latest data. With the Windy database search, it is a little bit cheaper. If you pick the Windy search option, it will give you an information slip with the following information, such as general information, property information, owner information, and endorsements. The third tool we use to obtain property data and determine property potential is town planning schemes, such as the City of Ekuruleni Town Planning Scheme 2014 and the City of Ekuruleni Land Use Scheme, which has not yet been promulgated. Town planning schemes contain a plethora of land use management jargon, so I'm just going to be running you through the land use management table, which is contained in the City of Ikaruleni Town Planning Scheme 24. This is the Ikaruleni Town Planning Scheme 2014. 
which is available online if you search Ekurileni Town Planning Scheme 2014. The Ekurileni Town Planning Scheme 2014 mostly deals with building lines and lines of no access, use of land or buildings, development conditions, parking and loading facilities, amenities and appearance of buildings, administration of land development rights and law enforcement. For the purpose of this exercise, we will be going to page 27 for the land use table. In the land use table, under column 2, you'd find the land use category. In column 3, you'd find the primary rights of that land use category. You'd find in column 4, special consent of municipal land use applications, which may be granted by means of special consent. In column 5, you'd find written consent A and B. So for example, a business 2 property may, with written consent from the municipality, be used as a veterinary hospital or taxi rank. In column 6, you'd find auxiliary uses applicable to columns 3 and 4, see clause 13.2, such as automatic teller machines, canteens and gaming machines. The fourth and final tool we use to obtain property data and determine property potential is spatial development frameworks. Spatial development frameworks are frameworks that seek to guide overall spatial distribution of current and desirable land uses within the municipality in order to give effect to vision, goals and objectives of the municipality. Ekuruleni, for example, is guided by the Ekuruleni Metropolitan Spatial Development Framework as well as six regional SDFs and a number of local spatial development frameworks such as the Area 33 LSD. As mentioned, spatial development frameworks give effect to the goals, objectives and vision of the metro, province or municipality. Spatial development frameworks are detailed documents and as town planning consultants we spend time to interpret these documents. Thus, for matters dealing with spatial development frameworks, it is advisable to consult a town regional planner. For the purpose of this presentation, we look at the Region C RSDF of Ekuruleni. This map gives effect to the goals and objectives outlined in the RSDF document, thus guiding development within the area. In some cases, there are LSDFs for more detailed future planning. Thank you so much for watching this presentation. For any inquiries, please feel free to send an email to planet at global.co.za. Thank you, Christian. I think that was very informative. I really enjoyed it and I hope everybody that's watching this video uh, will agree with me that um, there is the tools that he's, that he's making use of um, can be used by uh, professional property consultants uh, as well. And um, all the best and may you sell lots of properties. Thank you. Talk soon.